Good morning comrades, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the Nürburgring here at Apex and welcome to, let's say, part two where we will be using our so-called Red Golf as an example to show you about the necessary and today actually advanced track modifications. In the first video, check it out in the video description, we already covered the absolute basics to make sure that you will not end up in the wall due to the failing components. There's also always driver skill involved, but that's a different story. So check it out. And now together with George, hello, Yo, we will we'll be, be talking, talking about, about the advanced, so to say components to make your car perform even better if you're planning on doing more than 100 laps or so, or become a better driver, etc., etc. So, uh, as mentioned also, this is the car that you can rent and drive yourself if you do not have your car, or you don't have a good enough car, or your car is somewhere on a different continent where you come over for the trip. And we forgot to mention in the first video that the first 50 bookings will get a race navigator, which is a very advanced telemetry system for free. So jump on this red golf bandwagon, and looking forward to seeing you in this car. And once the track is open, obviously I will also do a lap probably together with George because after last yeah, year's black some, golf lap, Adrian is done with doing a lap. Do some, golf. <laughs> do some setup laps to be fair. Yeah, so yeah. The, car's, the car hasn't been driven yet, so. Anyway, we're already two minutes into this video, so let's get this started with. As mentioned, we covered all the basics in the previous video. Right now, so the seats, let's talk about those because it's actually also quite an important component especially once you have a high horsepower car with lots of more, more advanced downforce, sticky tires, and you go through the corner and then you end up holding yourself back everywhere through the corners and you become very tired, very fatigued, your shoulders start to hurt, you lose concentration, done. So seat is not only there for safety, which is of course very important, but also for well, not only for safety because it may not snap, uh, but also for safety because you will be more relaxed in the seat. Is there anything else to add to it? Yeah, I mean, it's just keeps you in the seat. It saves you from rolling around the car. Obviously, it's a, it's a stiff seat anyway. It's not reclinable. So if there is an accident, you're a little bit safer in one of these chairs anyway. And you can run a harness, which again, safety. Um, although a five-point harness isn't legal on the Nürburgring on TF. On a track day, you can still run a five point, four points normal. Um, yeah, so other than that, it's, yeah, it just keeps you in the, keeps you in space. It stops you from rolling around the car so much, even with any suspension, any, any mm -hmm. state of car, to be honest. So yeah. There are of course lots of seats on the market. We are running uh, Ricardo pool position because they come with the ABE, so so the called TUV approval. So it makes our life easy. Since we're in Germany, you need to put all the mods on the papers. And then nice and seats. Exactly. They're very nice yeah, and very comfortable. Seat, yeah. uh, and I think well, the majority of people put them in because they're just simply so good. Uh, together with seats, as mentioned, you have harnesses. Uh, important thing, of course, well, harnesses speak for itself because it ties you straight into the seat. It keeps you there. You have a better contact patch with your back with the seat. But let's maybe address a very important factor is namely how to mount the harnesses because that's what a lot of people actually do wrong. And I'm sure actually a lot of people are gonna comment on this video, George, you don't know how to install harnesses because not, not in the 45 degree angle or something. No, they're dead straight, we're all good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's different ways of mounting. Obviously we've got harness bars on the cage. This is a fixed one piece cage, so you can mount the harnesses to them. Um, so yeah, we've got a mounted to the cage like this, completely normal, normal way of mounting harnesses. If you go to the floor, if it's over, I can't remember the exact length, but if it's over a certain length, you're supposed to cross the right to the left, to the floor, um, and there's angles and stuff. If you buy harnesses um, in the box, Schroff in this case, will come with a paper that tells you the angles, tells you the mounting points, the lengths that need to be before you cross them, everything. It comes with everything in there. I can't remember off the top of my head, to be honest. Um, but yeah, we try and mount everything, everything to the cage. Having it straight off the back is nice. If there is a crash, it's not going to pull you, pull the seat down or anything. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's the easiest. Yeah, because harnesses actually, they need to sort of expand in case of an accident, yeah. in case of an impact, yeah. so you don't break your yeah, exactly. ribs or whatever. Not. So mounting them on the right and on the correct angle, according to the specification of the manufacturer, is very important. We run short again for the same reason, because A, they're good, uh, and B, they come with papers. You can put them easily in the, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, what's it called, in papers of the car. And there is that. Now, roll cage, quickly touching on that, of course, majority of people should know that it adds, well, uh, rigidity or it makes sure that your roof will not collapse on top of you. The question is, 
Why do you run a half cage instead of the full cage? Because it's easier to install. You do not like have to make too many adjustments to the chassis, but this, the A pillars are being made already extra strong so your roof will not collapse on you. So the weakest part of the roof from the manufacturer perspective is actually the rear side. So by adding a rear bar, you actually reinforce sufficiently enough, I think. If that's yeah, providing, you, providing you've got the right cage and you don't buy a cheap, cheap cage that's mounted to ice fix points and oh yeah let's not go there yeah let's uh, i mean <laughs> um, we can go there yeah, no, but no, we won't. Let, let's, <laughs> let's no. be covered yeah. um but yeah as long as you've got a cage that mounts to the right points on the chassis a good cage builder knows what they're doing so mm -hmm. whether it's a bolt in or a, or a weld in um personally welding half cage is pretty pointless mm -hmm. it's up to you um but yeah yeah, so cage serve basically three purposes. One is to reinforce your roof in case of an impact. Two, to add rigidity to the chassis. Now this one will add, of course, some rigidity, but not as much as a fully welded cage that goes through the, all the strut towers. M.3, in our case, very convenient. You will mount your harnesses to it so you don't have to use anchors, etc. I think it's also easier and neat looking product. Uh, helmet box, very important. What does that add? 10 horsepower. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, two no. helmets. Okay. Um, let's talk actually maybe about the suspension. Although we covered it in the previous video, maybe now we can go more into detail why it is maybe important for people to run an adjustable suspension. How many adjustments do they need? Yeah, I mean, you don't, for, let's go, let's base on the Nordsch life. Two way is fine. A two way is perfectly fine for most what cars. What does two way mean? Is two way means you've got your your bump and your rebound is adjustable. Mm -hmm. So I believe it's the high speed. High speed is adjustable um, on your bump and your rebound is adjustable. Mm -hmm. On a three way, you've got high and low speed. The bump, bump. means basically how fast the, the shock compression. can compress. Yeah. Well, yeah, the compression and, and the then rebound, rebound is how quickly how it allows the damper to drop back down yeah so so the, basically what you need to think if you're driving on a notch life with a lot of elevation changes undulations and most importantly high curb stones how easy can you take this curb stone how quick can this shock bounce and rebound and then also how quick or how slow it will do that and yeah, of course exactly. also you have right height and etc et yeah there's a lot of other factors to take yeah. in but um so yeah i mean a two-way is fine the main thing is is getting your spring rates correct i mean this is if you if you're not setting the car up yourself if you don't know what you're doing i would always advise taking it to someone who knows suspension to, to set it up i think a general question what we should address to is that a lot of people quite often say like hey uh the suspension brand xyz doesn't matter we're not gonna name any names so like even the premium name is so horrible because i installed it and it worked like shit. the thing is you need to install the suspension by someone who knows what they're doing and if you're workshop is dealing in suspension brand x y or z make sure that they're installing their stuff because they know how it works i think that's a general yeah rule. i mean you see it you see all the time people have like i've had a couple of cars to set up before <laughs> and yeah. the rebound is at maximum because they wanted to stiffen it up just the wrong way to stiffen up suspension like yeah. to make it stop rolling stiffen it up you know mm -hmm. so there's other ways that you need to know the ins and outs of what you're doing to set it up um but it is very important because with, with a suspension like this, obviously it comes with pillar ball top mounts, so with camber plates on the front, um, which allows you to dial in more camber, which if you're going to be doing a lot of laps and you, you're going to be driving quick, you will notice a huge difference in the way the car handles, in tyre wear, in even on this car, how, the, how much the traction control really steps in to, to help. Mm -hmm. um, because obviously, with it's very basic and very quick, but with more negative camber, if you're going into a corner, the, the wheels stand up and you have more contact patch on the loaded wheel. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why you run more negative camber and you'll see this entire wear and stuff. That's the only negativity you should have in your life. Basically. Yeah, literally. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's like a, a real important, important mm -hmm. thing to, to take into account with suspension mm -hmm. that is a, a lot of a bigger part than you think. So. Exactly. Of course, there are a lot of more things that we will cover in a separate video about how to set up your suspension, what values are important, uh, and what do they mean, and how they affect the handling. But now we can move on to another thing, actually. Look at this massive wing. It probably adds, I would say, 13 and a half kilos of downforce. So that's why we had to run 8 kilos stiffer springs. Uh, but yeah, all the jokes aside, uh, it probably adds something and the question is do you need to have lots of aero on your car um you don't need it no but when it comes to if you're going to be driving there's a, here has a lot of high speed fast corners look mm -hmm. at shredding quotes for mm -hmm. instance um prime example yaris stock form 
mm, it's a bit nervous through there. It could probably do with some better aero. There's certain cars that, that you will notice a difference on. Obviously, this is a kind of more aesthetics more than anything, but you've got companies that do make adjustable wings for Golfs, Coopers, which, yes, they do make a difference for sure. Uh, it definitely keeps the back end a little more, little more stable when you've got a little bit of wing. Mm -hmm. Um, again, this is more for looks than anything because I can't really find anything with Tuv for a Golf. But if you have a chassis mounted front lip, um, let's use the M4 for example, you get the GT4 style splitter, which is a factory part, which is completely fine. And you've also got two intakes for brake ducting and well, should probably walk force. over to our Yeah, exactly. Taxi. The taxi has it. So. Yeah. Um, so it has the bigger wing that will obviously do something. And here we have the splitter that definitely will do something including with the brake cooling ducts that yeah. will. So this is chassis mounted. So obviously I'm not going to stand on it. It's not that strong, but it is strong enough for it to, to withstand the, the downforce that it's generating. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's not. It makes your front end a lot more stable. Exactly. And keeps... especially with a front wheel driven car, this is something that you should probably go for in the first place yeah. than having a big spoiler on the, the back. back. Just be careful not to go you need aero balance. You need to have, be able to have front and rear aero balance. There's no point in putting a massive front lip on mm -hmm. and there's nothing on the back. And there's yeah. no point in vice versa. And if you're gonna do that, then run it at the least aggressive setting you can mm -hmm. until you have something on the back or on the yeah. front. Yeah. That's, that's the, the best exactly. advice really. And also going about the angle of attack of the rear wing, etc. Yeah, exactly. It's all things you can play with. But. Uh, final thing, maybe the cooling, quickly touch base on that. Yeah, cooling, if you're, if you're gonna be using as a pure track car only and you're really gonna be pushing, especially if you've had remap for more power or yeah, a few things. But on this, for instance, if I was gonna use this as my own track car, oil cooler, engine oil cooler, 100% yes. There's a few companies that make them with Tuv um, or with, you don't, I think, don't, I think you don't need approval. No, you don't need approval. Mm. Um, DSG cooler, never really experienced too many problems with it, but it is worth using a good oil and a DSG cooler as well if you're, it's an all-out track car. Yeah. Um, and obviously your, your engine coolant pack. So the radiator, stock radiators are normally pretty good, but if you are experiencing high coolant temps, then 100% go over to a, a bigger Alley Rad. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you can you can find a few on the market for loads of different cars. There's there's CSF maker. Um, there's so many companies. Yeah. Um, but it's definitely worth doing if it's an all-out track car because you do not want to overheat your car, burst the coolant pipe. Yeah. Blow up the engine. Blow up the worst engine. Case. Yeah. I mean, Leak how oil. coming up Kesselshun, if you're flat all the way up. Yeah. I mean, the temperature. So you often. can watch the gauge just go up and up and up. Forty six yeah. is overheat up there. Yeah. It's worth just doing, sorting the cooling system out so you haven't got these issues. We've seen it plenty last year, even stock cars, and especially stock cars with some engine map on it, overheating like crazy. Yeah, I've seen 150 degrees oil temperature. 150? Yeah. Nah, we're slowing down. I don't want to blow up your car, bro. <laughs> no, I didn't on that either. Yeah, because it's on there. Yeah, yeah. No, it's like close to 140. No, that's... Yeah. It's warm. Yeah, get that oil cooler going on. Cooling doesn't have to be expensive. Of course, if you're gonna put the full system on, like intercooler, oil cooler, radiator, then it might become pricey, but overall, just start with even with the base oil cooler. It will help you to keep the temps down, to extend the uh, longevity, the life of your engine, and uh, yeah, of all the components, and just have a nice time. Because yeah, well, otherwise your car will end up also just going maybe in just limp mode, it will, create some frustrations, etc., etc. So just, uh, yeah, I think that's kind of it. We could, of course, also say more about the advanced brake cooling that we had here. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So, so we showed previously, in the previous video, the basics where the RS3 things. I put them away. Oh, you put, put them it's away. It's basically two channels that divert air mm -hmm. from under the car into the into Check the out the first the video if you missed it. Yeah. Uh, and this is the more advanced that will actually guide the air yes. from the front straight to your brake yes. discs. So you un undo your back plates and replace the back plates with these plates here. Obviously all cars are different whether they make them for your car or not. But mm -hmm. this then obviously channels it through to the front, but this is for the G80. Mm -hmm. Channels it through from the front grill, round the back, straight directly onto the back of the brake disc, literally directly onto the back of the disc or inside the bell of the disc, which then pushes the air out through the brake disc. This makes such a big difference that it's a shame that you can't get this on most cars. Like there's, I think you could probably fit a kit on this, but it would be a little bit more complicated than you would like. Mm -hmm. Hence the reason why we run the RS3 duct in. But if you can get a decent kit for, 
for the car 100 percent is worth doing because yeah we saw it on our taxi that it will extend the life of your braking opponents twice or even more i think on the g80 i think we got an extra 80 to 100 laps out of yeah. a set of discs with yeah cooling. so if you're for example of a g80 such an expensive modern car where brake components also are quite expensive you probably end up spending like two three thousand euro yep. for brakes and a brake cooling only costs you like what a couple of hundred euros yep. and you're gonna save thousands of euros actually literally by this small upgrade it's the best thing you can get well i think that's kind of it more or less yeah i mean you could uh, you could touch base on you could go as far as saying changing exactly. the brake calipers and stuff as well but it, it can go extremely it's, but it's all relevant uh, i think now we covered with the basic mods and more advanced mods what will make the car a club sport package car yeah more which, enjoyable to drive more safer to drive faster because you can still daily it but it has all the important components uh adjusted changed and which will allow you as mentioned have, be faster be safer and just have longer track fun time on the track even on the streets as well we didn't do pops and bangs, by the way, no remaps. That's not what we do. You could do it, of course, eventually go for like some 400 horsepower remap, but that's a story for another time. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, this update, this second part. Again, if in case you missed the beginner's part, check it out and let us know what you would like to have covered in the upcoming video, whether it's about suspension settings, the, the tire pressures is a very important topic i made actually a one very good time pressure video that unfortunately got lost on a crashed hard drive luckily not a crashed car um yeah that's kind of it thank you very much george and Enjoy. see you next time what are we doing next mm. maybe whatever people say Ooh, but also maybe on m2 m2 how oh, we're building the m2 next yeah week. we've got the calf cage and seats to go in the m2 mm. and also obviously e46 is going to be an ongoing project for the next few months so there's going to be lots of Lots of on that. contents. So yeah. enjoy that. And see you either on the channel or here at the Nebukring or inside that car. Bye.